Sat inside a kiva. Sat inside the underground chamber. Third day in. Four days, five days, six days, pitch black, dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. Preparing for a ceremony that had been spoken to me, we are going to take you to the land of the living dead. You must prepare yourself. You go into the kiva, into the underground chamber in full and total darkness, and for seven days you dream. You dream with our earth ready for us to take you to the land of the living dead. Finally, on the seventh day, and the trap door opens and the kiva door is there and light floods in. And together with my two other friends, we emerge into the light. And we're loaded into a truck. And the truck takes, takes us on this journey to this place that we only know of as the land of the living dead. And we are filled with fear. We are seven days dreaming in the darkness, in the earth. And they took us to a shopping mall. <laughs> Witness the living dead. And before you get too superior, <laughs> Mac, before you imagine that you are so different, open your heart to the pain that it is to be disconnected from life, to be disconnected from our earth. Bring your people back to their mother. You have lost your songs. You have lost your old stories. You have lost each other. You have lost yourself. Do not be embarrassed to speak of what you love and of what brings tears to your eyes. Be the warrior of the open heart. Twenty-five years went by, and at Embercum one day, we welcomed an Aboriginal elder. His name's Bob Randall, or Chilpi, his name. And he came to Embercombe as he'd been to many other parts of the world, and he is part of the stolen generation. Those mixed race children were born between the union of black and white, of Aboriginal peoples of Australia and white settlers. And the Aboriginal families cared for those children as their children, why wouldn't they? But the government of that land at that time, and truly many other governments, ours certainly included in this way back in time, have done similar things. But they took those little children away from their families to the other side of Australia to raise them as civilized people. And yet they kept the door firmly locked on that world, so they were left suspended. 
And you'll be taught about the agony of being separated from his canini, his land, his family, his belief system, his spirituality, each one cut and cut and cut and cut. Left in an existential loneliness For his family was all the creatures and plants and rocks of the land that he lived and grew upon, which was right next to Uluru, Ayers Rock. Where is my Uluru? Where is our Uluru? <laughs> For the same thing happened to us. The same thing happened to us. It was those same people that put me into the kiva who spoke to me about the Isle of Mona 2,000 years ago when Anglesey, as it now is, was the temple school of all of Britain and half of Europe. And where the earth wisdom teachings were taught. Find your way back to your Uluru. How do we do that? I hope so much that we do not ignore or cast aside our dreamers, our storytellers, our rememberers only in favor of those who make action in our world. For we need both. We need the poets and the storytellers. We need the dreamers. We need the rememberers. And we need the people who do things and preferably all wrapped into one. But without remembering our stories, without rediscovering our songs, without finding our way back to our canini and mending what was broken, we are the living dead. I'm standing on the edge of a forest. The ancients say that it was the trees who sang humanity into existence. Over millions and millions of years, breathing in all the poisons, all the gases that were around that were hostile to us, singing us into the world, they say, was the great task of the trees. These trees that stand behind me and to which you look. We have known of their sacredness over thousands and thousands of years. Whether it was the cherry tree for Japan or the western red cedar on the the Pacific coast, First Nation people, whether it was the oak tree of the Druids, whether it was the ash tree, Yggdrasil, for the Norse and Viking people, and the tree of life, the ash tree, what do we hear of her? We hear that another disease is with our trees and that tree of life, the tree of life, Yggdrasil, the ash tree, she is falling back and some are dying. Many are dying. I 
How can we find our way to a more beautiful world? If we do not take it upon ourselves to learn to love deeply, to be the warrior, to have courage in our hearts, to speak up, to stand, and simultaneously to work, to soften, to gentle, to be more with the trees. These great water beings, enormous great geysers of water as they are, lifting hundreds of gallons of water up through the column of their stem and out. These extraordinary beings of trust and innocence teaching us, teaching us, teaching us with their beauty, with their grace, with their elegance, with their vulnerability about community, about connectedness, about belonging. As we step into our future, I feel that it is of pivotal importance that we remember the voices of our indigenous people, the voices of our own ancient past, the voices still there like Chilpi, or the people that trained me, saying, Grow your brilliance. Train your mind. Do all those most wonderful things. Find knowledge. But also open and open and open your heart so that you can feel. Have your feet upon the earth. And know that she loves you. And that you do truly belong. Something quite wonderful is happening in our world now. We are dreaming something. We are dreaming something. And we are stepping towards it. We are stepping towards it. But as we make that journey, and the pain, the, the acute pain and horror of what we will witness and are witnessing as we move through this change time means that we need to ask the question, how will we sustain ourselves? as we walk through, assaulted as we are by the death of our ash trees, of our sisters and brothers around the world, of famines, of children by the million dying, of peoples have no water. How will we keep ourselves strong so that we can walk and bring all our gifts forward if we do not have ourselves rooted? somehow, in the deep sense of connectedness and belonging, and the absolute knowing that it is a privilege to be alive at this time and on this earth, this garden planet, this most beautiful garden planet, our earth. And we have each other. We have each other. And one thing for sure that will hold us away from our dream is if we forever think in terms of the good people and the bad people. 
of the righteous, the righteous. There is no more scary word in the vocabulary, I think, than the righteous. So business is not the enemy. The banks are not the enemy. The oil barons are not the enemy. There is no enemy. We are connected. We are family. We are together, and it is in that openness and softness and preparedness to listen and to be there with each other that I think we will find our way through to our more beautiful world. And I see that borne out as I, as I engage with the executives of those companies. Because attacked, debated with, argued with, cornered, they respond the way I respond. But when it's with a hand and openness and an honesty, of course, a challenge, but in the embrace, in the deep knowing that we are Kanini, then we find a person has no need to defend and they come forward because they are Fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, grandfathers and grandmothers, just like me. Thank you.